In a country with direct democracy, people can participate directly in politics. Everyone can help decide how the state, the cantons, and the communities are organized. One of the oldest forms of direct democracy is the so-called Landsgemeinde. Appenzell in Rhodes and Glarus are the two last cantons where residents entitled to vote gather every spring in the open air to decide on laws and expenditure. In the whole of Switzerland, residents vote on average four times a year on various issues concerning their community, their canton, or the whole of the country. For example, they can vote on whether to have a new school built in the village, on how the canton should produce its electricity, or in the state old age pension plan. In addition, every four years the people elect the 246 members of the national parliament, which consists of two chambers. The House of Representatives, representing the people, and the Senate, representing the cantons. This system gives less populated cantons more political weight. Parliament makes laws and elects the national government, which consists of seven members of various parties. People can overturn laws made by the parliament by launching a referendum. If they manage to collect 50,000 signatures within 100 days, the bill has to be voted on by the public. The People's Initiative enables citizens to make alterations to the Swiss Constitution. To hold a public vote on an initiative, 100,000 signatures have to be collected within 18 months. What are the pros and cons of this system? The main advantage is that it gives the Swiss citizens a lot of power in decision making. Every uh, so often, several times a year, they can take decisions not just on who runs the country, but also on concrete proposals. One of the key disadvantages is probably that it makes decision making slower and there are a lot of act political actors involved. There's the parliament, there's the administration, the government, interest groups, and, uh, and at the end the people, and often it's unclear at the end who has been responsible. Some criticize the system for allowing people to accept initiatives that might contradict constitutional law or international accords. The following two examples of recent votes polarized people in Switzerland and abroad. In November 2009, a people's initiative to ban minarets in Switzerland was accepted by 58% of voters, despite Parliament and the government's clear recommendation that it be rejected. One year later, a people's initiative on the deportation of criminal foreigners was accepted by a majority of 53%. The minaret ban and the deportation law were therefore added to the Swiss Constitution. It's Parliament's task to adjust the laws so that they comply with international law and accords. There are different opinions as to what extent this is feasible, depending on people's political views. How well does Swiss democracy really work? Considering the many possibilities for political participation in this country, could there possibly be a more democratic system? At the beginning of 2011, political scientists at Zurich University, as well as at the Social Science Research Center in Berlin in Germany, developed a democracy barometer for 30 countries. Surprisingly, Switzerland only ranked 14th. The study is controversial, but highlights other criteria that define a democracy besides active participation in the political process. In Switzerland, it sees shortcomings, for instance, in the lack of a constitutional court, in party financing, which is not transparent, and in the weak participation in public votes and elections. On average, only two out of five people eligible actually cast their votes. Despite some deficiencies, Switzerland's direct democracy is unique. Switzerland is the only system where direct democracy plays such an important role role in decision making at the national level are uh, when the votes on, uh, on, on issues determine the political ag agenda to a great degree. 
It makes decision-making slightly less predictable because at the end it's the people that are going to decide and not just the elites. Together with neutrality and federalism, direct democracy makes part of the Swiss national identity. Not least, this unique political system helps unite the various languages, religions and cultures in Switzerland. <laughs>